Learn how to build a complete full stack project in ASP.NET Core. ASP.NET Core is a high performance open source framework for building modern cloud based internet connected applications such as web apps, IoT apps, and mobile backends using .NET. In this course, Alan O'Mary will teach you how to build an auction web application. Hi there everyone, welcome back to another YouTube series. In this series, we are going to create a complete application in ASP.NET Core. We are going to build an auctions application where every user can create a listing and the user who bids the highest amount will win in the moment that the listing's owner decides to close the bidding. Each user will have the option to see its own listings and the listings he has bid it for by simply going to the corresponding link in the navigation menu. Many different features will be implemented in this project, such as adding comments in the listings details page, pagination, uploading image files in a project, making changes to the pages depending on the user currently logged in, and many more. In this first section, we're going to create the project and we're going to add the models needed for our application. We will then connect our project to the database and this way we will have the fundamental setup to continue to build our project. So, firstly we need to create a new project and we need to find here a template for an MVC application. Just type here MVC and just click on this one next uh, we can name our project here I name mean, it just auctions go to the next page and here we need to make the authentication type to individual accounts so that we have these users already enabled in our uh, project when it loads this way we have the users functionality already uh, being taken care of Okay, so the first thing we want to do is go to models and start adding classes or models to uh, for our models needed for the project. Let me just name the first model. The first model is going to be the main one, which is the listing. So for each listing that our application will have. And I'm going to give it a public int ID property. And then for each listing, we're going to need a title to be a string. And of course, uh, we need a description for each listing. Uh, we're going to need a double property for the price of the listing that we will put there. Here we need a string property for image path. So basically when an image will be uploaded for a listing, it will be stored inside the folder in our project. And for us to call the image of a specific listing, we will use then the path where the image is stored. But you will see it later on how this all works. Then we're going to need the is sold of bool property because uh, this way we will specify if a listing is already sold or not and we will not display the sold listings in the first page and also some other functionalities will depend of if a listing is sold or not. Then we're going to connect, we need to connect each listing to the uh, user and we'll need an identity user ID, which is a property of type string. Firstly, and we need here to specify the object we'll connect the listing to, the model, which is an identity user, and we'll name it user. So we'll make them nullable. And we need to specify here the foreign key for the user, which will be this identity user ID. So this identity user were already installed when we made the individual accounts to uh, when we created a project. And basically, each listing will be created by a specific user, so that's why uh, we need this 
two properties here. And on top, we're going to make this as required. So basically what this does is whenever a user is deleted, for example, uh, we won't be able to see the listing anymore because that's uh, how it would make sense. So if well, a user is not uh, anymore in my application, we won't see the listings as well. The listings will be deleted from the database. And in the end, we're going to need to connect the listings. So one listing will have multiple bits made to it. And we will create this, uh, this model now a bit later. And also each, uh, each listing will help multiple comments to it. And we'll create the comments model also uh, next. And this is the way we store them when we uh, write these type of models when they are one to many relationship models. So let me create the next model that we need. The bid.cs model. Firstly, I'm going to need an int ID property. And then a double property for the price. I'm just copy this because each bid has also need to be connected to a user who made the bid. And if the user is no longer there, the bid will be created. So if the user is deleted, the bid will be deleted. And we will also need to connect each bit to a listing. So firstly, we need a uh, listing ID property and then a listing property. Just calling it listing. We we'll need to make both of them as nullable. And here we specify the foreign key, which is listing ID. Let me just create the next model that we need, which is going to be the comment that says the comment on the okay so as usual we need an int id property and then we need a string property for the content of the comment And I'm just going to copy this again, this identity user ID and the user, the identity user property. So just like by on the bits, I'm actually going to copy this from the bit model because just like with bits, we connect the comment with the user and with the listing. So they have to be connected to a, to a user and the listing and just copy that down. And that now what we're going to need to do is go to the context, which was already created by default. When we created the project, then we need to specify the DB set instances for each model that we created. So a DB set a listing, which I'll name listings. And we're going to do the same thing for all the three models that we created. So DB set bids, I'm naming it bids. And the DB set for the comment. And I'll name it comments. So now uh, when we go to app settings.json, we have a, a default database connection there, but we're going to need to create 
a new database actually and go here and create a new database. Let me just open SQL Server Management Studio to get this uh, server name. Okay, let me just copy this. I'm just gonna paste it here and give a name to the database, like auctions data or something. And if we click here on properties, here we have a connection string in this properties window, which I'm just gonna copy and put it here in the appsettings.json file. Just pasting it there. I'm just gonna add another thing here. So I set the encryption to false because we don't have a password set to access the database basically. And here we have created our database and we have stored the address in appsettings.json. Now, if we go to program.cs, here we see that the service is already add, uh, is already added here. So the service for the, uh, for the context and which also connects it, the context to the connection string, as we can see this here. And yes, what we need to do is just go to package manager console and add the migrations for the models that we created. Okay, so just add migration. And here I'm just giving a name to the migration. Okay, I think we've done a mistake in appsettings.json. So in appsettings.json, I think we have, we're missing a comma or something there. Okay, so uh, we didn't close this bracket here. This was the problem. So I'm just gonna need to add the migration again. And it is successful. And just gonna update the database now. In this section, we will create our index page. We will firstly create a controller and then we'll create a service to get the data from the database. Lastly, we will also handle the front end part by designing the index view page. So, uh, firstly, let's just go to the controllers folder and add the controller with views here so that we will have some base methods. Uh, let me just select here the model of listing, the context, and we'll just create it so that we have some uh, boilerplate methods for the crowd operations. We won't use them exactly. Uh, we actually will create a service to get the data from the database, but just so that we have some code in the beginning. That's why we're doing it uh, so. Okay, so here we have our controller with the methods. And in this video, we'll handle the index method. So first, let me just go to the data folder and add the folder for the services. Just naming it services. And inside here, firstly, we need a, we will create a service, an interface here. So I'm gonna add a new item, an interface. And I'm naming it iListing service because we will get data for the listings. And here, firstly, we'll just create first select a signature method that we'll then implement in the services class. So uh, the return type would be of I queryable of listing, and I'm naming the method get all. So this will implement then in the new file that we'll create that I'm gonna be, okay, so I need to import here the models uh, directory. Then I'm just gonna add a class 
that I will name a listing service where we'll implement this method signature that we wrote there. So I'm just naming it listing service. Click add, and here we'll implement the interface that we created, the I listing service. And if we click here uh, to show the errors, we can click here on implement the interface so that this method is implemented somehow. So, so firstly, let me just uh, modify the get all method here. Let, let's just write the get all method. And I copied it from the controller, what we had there. And just, it's just as simple as this. We're just taking listings from the context and we will include there the users so that we will see the users. And for the context, we will come here and copy this, what this, what is here in the controller and just paste it down on top. We just need to rename the constructor here to listing service. So we'll get the information from the database in this service and the method is okay. And now here where we had taken the context, here we will import in the controller the service that we just created. So I listing service, and then we'll name this like underline listing service. And then modify it here in the con in the constructor as well. Okay, and what we can do now in the index method here, we will take the method that we created in the service. So here, just write underline listing service dot get all which is the name of the method that we have in this service and that is basically how we'll get the data for the listings in our index page i'm going to need to uh, comment all these other methods below because they are using the context and uh, we now we are just using the service in this controller so it would have a lot of errors if we let them as they are. So I'm just commenting out everything uh, except for the index method, which so that we can test it, how it looks like. Now, when we go to program.cs, we need to add the service that we created here. So in the services here, let's start builder.services. Dot add scope to add as a scoped service. And here we'll have to write the name of the interface that we created. And the name of the service itself. Okay, let me just go to the listings folder in the views folder and here at the index.cshtml I will just basically just change the header here to an h2 header and right here active listings to see all the listings that are active in our application and I guess I'm just going to remove this table presentation here Okay, so I'm just going to delete all of this. And I'm making a forge loop here to loop through all of the listings that we have. So for each var listing in the model, that is the listings model. Okay, I guess I'm need to make it as an iQueryable here because that's how the data was when I wrote the method before. And here I'm gonna have a div container, div of class container to represent all of the objects, all of the things in this page. I'm just giving it styling as well, the background color, 
I just saw it before. So I'm just typing here the RGBA code. So yeah, I was just testing it a little bit before and I found the color and this is the code for the color. So I'm setting the margin on top to be 50 pixels. And the margin on the bottom to be also 50 pixels. I'm giving it a padding of like 20 pixels. And I'm giving it to the border a radius, so it's like a corner shaped. And giving it the border radius to 10 pixels. Okay, so inside we need other div. Uh, I'm giving it the class for all, which is a bootstrap class, and inside of it will. Uh, have another div with a class of column so that we specify in this way we specify how many objects are in a row so we make the class of column and then if the screen is small the div will take six out of 12 imaginary boxes of space and if the screen is large the div will take a bit less space it will take five out of 12 imaginary boxes of space this is just to make the page responsive across different devices. And here in the, oh, we'll write for the images of the listings here, I'm just uh, making this sign here. We will store the images in a folder that we will create later that will be in the root www.root folder, we create the images folder there, and then we will take the listing that image path, which will be the, the address of the image where the image is stored. And for each image, uh, we'll handle the styling here. So the maximum width, I'm setting it to be something like 400 pixels. And the maximum height, just basically the same, 400 pixels. Okay, so I'm copying this to have, to have another div here. This div will be a bit larger. That's how we specify the seven there. And here we have a H5 header. Inside of it, we'll have an anchor tag, which will redirect us to the details page. And here we specify the route ID to be equal to the models ID. Okay, I'm setting the color here. The color making it to be uh, black. And inside the anchor here, we'll, I put the listing, the title, so the title of the listing. And just below, we're gonna need another div. Inside of it, we'll just store the description of the listing. Uh, okay, so firstly here we will need to specify the listing price, which is how much is bidded or needs to be bidded for the listing. And I'm making this two string 
uh, method here of n2. So there, there are two numbers behind the, after the comma. So when the number is 50, it will be displayed like 50 comma zero zero dollars. And just below there, we'll just write here who listed the listing. So the owner, so to say, so listing that user that uh, email, but it's the same, just like the username, I think, in our case, because the user's name we stored as an email actually. So, yeah. Okay. So here I'm going to make an if clause and in case there are, there is nothing in the model. So the model is empty. There are no listings in our database. I'm just going to display it here. So that there are no active listings. So that's what basically we have to see. Firstly, when we load that application now, because we haven't stored anything in the database. Okay, we have stored the service and program that says here we can just specify the default controller to be the listings controller. So that when we uh, run the application, it will appear the index of the listing controller with the first method to be called, the first link to be called. And by just running the project now. Okay, we are, um, I think in the, if we go to the controller, so the listings controller here, we uh, return the view as a list, the application the context that to list I think. That's why we can't write here, I query about what I did, but to just to leave it as it was like list and I enumerable. So I don't know why it changed that actually. Now, uh, yeah, when we run the application, this is what appears. The uh, we see here that we have no active listings, so this is our index page. But when we store objects there, we will see we'll see the listings. When we store listings there, we'll see the listings. In this section, we will handle our create page. We will see how we can create the listings, and during this, we will see how we can upload and store files in our project such as image files. Okay, so let me just go to the listings controller and uncomment here this get create method. I'm just going to remove this part here because we don't need it. And I'm also going to need to uncomment this post create method as well. But we'll modify it a lot there. So when we create the listings, we're going to need to get an image file from the user and we will store it inside the folder that we will create inside the project. For this reason, we're going to need a helper model that is similar to the listings model, but it does store the images inside an iform file property. Then we'll take the data from this model and create a listing model with it. But instead of the iform file, we will store in the database the address of the file in the image file string property that the listings model has. So let us just create this model firstly. I'm just naming it listing view model. Just as a practice. And let me go to the listing model. And from here, I'm going to copy almost everything. I'm going to change the image path property later. And I'm not going to use these bits and commons because I don't need them when the user inputs the data. And here I'm changing this property to iform file, which accepts files, including images, then name it uh, like image, just image. 
I need to import the data annotations here for the required uh, data annotation. Okay, so I'm going to go to this www root folder, and here inside I'm going to add an images file, which will be the address where the images will be stored when the user stores it, when a user creates a listing. So if we go to the create.cs uh, HTML, here we're gonna need to modify a few things to create the listing. So I'm just changing the header to create listing. I'm making it an H2 header. And on top, I'm gonna import a few things so that we can get the uh, user that is currently logged in in the application. So firstly, just add using Microsoft that ASP.NET Core Identity. I'm also going to need to inject here the user manager in the view page. So it takes an identity user and a limit like user manager with a small u. Okay, so here uh, we're going to need to write encryption type in the form. And here we'll select multi part form data, which will be able to accept the file, the image that we will uh, input there. Here in the price, when we take the price in the label, we can just write the starting bit. Here in the image path, we're gonna rename it to image because now it is it is a listing view model, not a listing model, which had uh, which has an image property. Changing it here as well, but we need to. On top, we need to make it as listing view model, not listing model. Here in the input for the image, I need to specify also that it accepts image. So this line here, we need it to write there. And about the styling of it, we can do something. So I'm just setting the width to 30% uh, of a normal form. Changing the image here also. Right now for the isold port property, we don't need to input anything here, but we need to make it that the default value for the isold property to be false. So a uh, listing is not sold. And this we can modify if we go to the listing model to the listing view model as well. So here we need to make it equal to false. So when it is a listing is created, uh, it is by default is not sold. So we'll need to modify it in the listing view model as well. So here we need to, don't need to take any input for that. Okay, so here now we need to take the currently logged in user. Uh, so just put here an input tag. It will be of type hidden. So yeah, it's not shown in the view page. Here in the ASP4 tag, we need to specify identity user ID. And we need to select the value to it, so it will have the value of the currently logged in user. So how we get the currently logged in user, we use user manager that get user ID of the user that is logged in. 
So that's the syntax how you write it here in the view pages. Uh, let me just run this here, run the project here to see specifically the create view page, how it looks like. There seems to be an error. Let me just find it. Okay, so I would suggest the problem is the create post method because we haven't fixed it and it has a context in it that we take the information from the controller, we take the information from the service. So I think that's the problem. Let me just go to the controller. Yes, so here are the areas. So I'm just going to co comment this out for a minute and try to run the project again. Let me just go and to see the create view page. You see how this looks. And okay, I'm just gonna uncomment this now so that we can handle what so we saw how the form looked, how the create page looked, but we'll see we'll handle here how the input will be handled. So in the here we'll take a listing view model. Just name it listing. So we're just thinking an if close here to check if the listing that image is not null. So here we'll see we'll store it in this images folder so firstly to we need the variable to specify the upload directory which is going to be can get it by writing path dot combine we'll need to access this uh, address of the www root directory which can be done using a web hosting environment service, which will, will have to include actually in the constructor of this controller. So we'll combine this path with the images folder. So for this to work, we need to import it here in the constructor. Firstly, we need a we need the private read only variable for it. It's going to be iWeb host environment. I'll name it just like web host environment. And this will get us the address of this uh, directory that we want where the images are stored. Just need to specify it here inside the constructor as well. And back to the create method here, we need to specify here the we need the variable for the file file name. How we can get this is by writing listing that image that name that file name, sorry. This will get the name of the file when we upload it. And the file path will be path that combine this upload directory together with the file name. So now we need to write here using var file stream. Write new file stream. We'll create a new file stream class here. Inside, we will specify file path and file 
mode.create which will basically create a file for us. So this file stream initializes a file stream class. Here is the path of the image where the file stream or file will be created. And here we specify that we want to create a file in this file mode that creates as we can read it here. So what is left for us to do is here, right? Listing that image that copy to file stream. And after we have created and stored the file inside our project, we'll create a listing object, which will be what will be stored inside our database. So we'll have this, uh, we'll create a new listing. The title of it will be the title, which was the listing view model, the title. So we'll take it from the view model. The same thing we'll, we'll do for the description as well. price equals listing the price. So this listing was actually the listing view model that we took from the form. The identity user ID will be listing that identity user ID. And the image path will be this file path that we have here above. So this is how the object is created until this point. And here, what's left for us to do is to return to return a direct to action to index page. So we'll return the user to the index page until the form when the form is submitted afterwards. But right now we need to add to have uh, to create a function in our service so that we can add this listing to our database. So we need a, f a method that doesn't return anything, which is an async await method, and I will name it add, and it takes a listing object. Let me just go now to the listing service. And here it would appear an error above and we need to click implement one moment. Yes, here when to implement the interface, yeah, we will need to write async. And we need to add this listing in context that in the database by writing context.listings.add listing. And we just need to save the changes to the database. So underline context.save changes async. And the method doesn't return anything. Here we need to call this method from the service that we just wrote. So await underline listing service. dot add and we'll add there this listing object. And we have an error up there because we haven't specified what happens when the listing that image is null. So let me just return the user to the same page where the user is. So to the create page together with the listing, a listing object. Okay, let me just run the application now so we can test it. We actually go to go to program.cs firstly because when we need to register a user uh, here, the service right here, we need to specify require confirmed account to false so that when we register a user, uh, it won't, doesn't need to uh, verify the account so it will be just created instantly. 
that's how we usually do it for our purpose. Okay, I didn't just uh, register a user here. I've run out of names for users. Yeah, just Jeff at gmail.com. Do we need the password for it? So the listings that create. I think I have a watch in my files. I'm starting with, I don't know, 35 and choose the file here. Okay. Uh, I'll choose this here. This is I think a man's shirt was there so I'm just changing this description here okay so here, here we see the listing was created we see how the design will be when we create a listing in the index page so we see the title the description and the bid and the person who made the listing so what I also need to show you is if we go to our images folder here here we can see that when we created the listing, the image was uploaded in our folder here. So basically, yeah, when a user inputted the file there, we created and stored the file inside this images directory. And then of course, a new listing was created with the image path uh, property. So with the edges, where the property where the, the image file is saved and here in the index view page we see that we take in the image the source is images uh, at listing that image path so this is how it is written from the database the address of the image this section will be about the details page for each listing which is the place where most of the functionalities of the application are actually written. So we will specify how a listing is displayed when we click on it. And we will also write some pieces of logic about the display when specific users see the listing. So firstly, we need to uncomment the details method here in our, pro in our controller. Let me comment the text here. And I'm going to actually remove a few pieces that we don't need. Okay, so all we need to do here is to make this uh, method here that accesses the database, we will need to make a method in the service. So here we will write the signature firstly, which will be an asynchronous method. It will return a listing and we usually name it uh, get by ID. And it will take an int ID as a parameter. So let me just go now to the listing service and implement this, what we wrote in the interface. I'm just going to need to write the async keyword. Basically, the logic here will be the same as what we have here. So I'm just copying this firstly. And I'm just pasting it here. Here I will also add. Here will I will also include the comments, and after that, I will also include the bids when we take a listing from the context. And after including bids, I'm actually gonna need for later use to then include 
the users of that bid, which I make with this then include method here. And of course, after this, I'm just going to need to return this listing variable here. That's all we need to do in our case here. We just now need to remove this here and use the method that we just created. Just so listing service that get by the and it takes the ID above. So just as a reminder, we use, we do these methods in the service so that we don't access the database from our directly from our controller. That's the reason why we write these services and then we import them in the controllers. We've talked about it uh, even before, but just as a quick reminder. Now let me just go to the details page where I'm basically just going to remove all of this. And here's the part where you play with the display of stuff. So here we'll just import the Microsoft identity to be able to access the users. Here I'm going to inject to the view page the user manager, which takes an identity user. I'll name it just the user manager. I'm just going to remove that. Here in the beginning, we need, I'm going to make an if clause here. So if the user that identity that is authenticated, so this basically just says that if the user is authenticated, is logged in, we'll make some uh, specifications in the display. And here, uh, what I'm basically doing is just, okay, if the model is sold, so if model that sold is true, we will uh, display a title in the listing. So uh, depending from the status of the listing, so who is the winner, or if the winner, uh, if the user is the winner, we'll display it as you are the winner. So first we need to loop through each bid in model.bids. So here, basically, if the bid.price is equal to the model.price, So for the user who, if the bid that price is equal to model that price, then the user has uh, had uh, the highest bid. And here we specify if the bid that user ID is equal to the logged in user, the current logged in user, which we get with this user manager that get user ID. Basically what, this is what this does. We will have a header here that says congratulations, you are the winner. So for this to be displayed, the user has to be logged in, the, the listing has to be uh, sold, and also the user's bid has to have the highest price from all of the bids. And if not else if, here we'll specify, we will see if the logged in user is actually the person who made the listing. So if user man, so if the currently you logged in user is the model that uh, identity that user that ID. So if the user has created the listing itself, it will tell the user who the name of the person who won the bidding. And if none of 
this is uh, is correct or is for the case then we will just display to a random user who opens the the listing and if the listing is closed he, he will see just that the bidding is closed so he won't see who won it or if he is not the winner he won't see uh, any additional information so we won't see who won it or of course he won't see that he won it so um, until now we just made this functionality to display uh, a title in the listing in front of the listing depending on who won it or if the bidding is closed now we're just gonna need to uh, play around with the display of the page of the listing. So I'm having a header here and then putting the text line to center to center it. And here we'll have the title of the model of the listing. Yeah, I'm going to need a container div, a div of class container. I'm giving the styling, I'm giving a background color, which is just the color I was, I saw before, I was, I just marked the values. I'm just writing it here for the color that I wanted. And So I'll give this div a bit of margins on top, like 50 pixels. And basically the same margin on the bottom as well. Just some paddings. And I will make, uh, I will input, put some border radius there to be, so the borders will have the corners on the edges. So inside this div class container, we're going to need to copy some things from the index page, because some parts here uh, will be like the same have some same structure. So I copied that part from the index view page and I'm pasting it here, but I need to adjust it a bit. So here I'll make the width to 100% of the width of the image and the height to 60 view height, which is the yeah, 60% of the screen, basically. And here we don't take it from listing that image path, but from model that image path. Okay, that listing title we don't need there because we have it on the top. Here I'm just gonna write that model the description. And this I will actually delete. And here I will, will specify some conditions to how the following the following will be displayed. So if the user is authenticated, we will make it possible for him to put a bid there to bid something. But if not, then not. So here I'll make a form, ASP action, which we haven't created this method yet in the controller, but I will just write it here, we'll create later. The method will be a post method. And here, where the bid will be displayed, we'll make an input there. So 
So the type of it will be number, so it takes only numbers. The minimum, the minimum value of it will be the model that price. So you cannot bid on lower than the model that price. And this step equals one just means that there is like an option there to, so with the errors to increase it with one or to decrease it with one, the price. And the name equals price. We need this so we can, so when the, for when the form will be submitted. And in the placeholder, we actually just store the model that price. Dot to string and here specify n2, which just basically will uh, write the number with two numbers after the comma. So with two places after the comma. Okay, we just needed one single input tag there. So together with the first input, when a bid will be submitted, it should take, because the bid object takes a user, takes a listing. So that's why we will write here this input of type hidden with the name of identity user ID. And the class of form control. So this will take the currently logged in user that submits the bid and the value that it takes will be, uh, will be, will take it from the user manager that get user ID of the currently logged in user. So yeah, I forgot this slash there and just, it's basically the same thing for to get the listing ID as well. So it will be hidden for the name here. We'll specify actually the name of the property, which is listing ID. So that we need when we, when the form will be submitted and here the value of it will be just like at model that ID. Here in the end, we just need an input of type submit. Just class of form control. Uh, no, sorry, class of button and button uh, primary to be like a, a blue button. We only needed an in one single input tag there as well. And this was it for the add bid form. And below there, we can submit, we can display the number of bids submitted in a paragraph. And how we'll take it is we'll take, we'll write here model that bids that count, which is the method that takes the number of bids that our model has. I'm just making here uh, this just like a line to separate it from the next thing. And here we will specify so if the from the will take the currently logged in user and if the user is actually the person or the person who created the bid, he will be only he will be able to see the name of the people who have submitted bids. So if user manager that get user ID equals to the model that user that ID, he will be able to see will list here all of the names of the people who submitted a bit and how much they submitted. So 
only the owner or the creator of the listing will be able to see this for each. Uh, so we'll take for each bid in model the bids. So we'll write here an unordered list of just specify the styling here to list style type to none not to have all of this default list stylings here we'll take bit that user that username so the username of the user who have submit has submitted a bit and we'll write here bid it and the price the amount of the bid so add bid that price that to string parentheses and to so it will be formatted a bit the price yeah so that was it firstly for this part so if the user is actually not logged in now he won't be able to submit anything So here I just need a div and here I will just make an input which will set it to disabled so you cannot input anything there and yeah we won't do it inside the forms because uh, it won't take anything the input. I'm just copying this here. So here in the input of type submit, we make it disabled. So you cannot click on the button, on the submit button. So we're also right here, if the user is not logged in, he will be able to see also the number of bits submitted for that listing. And here down below for to be able to see by all we'll just try the name of the person who sub who listed the listing so model at model that user that username so then just copy this here we we'll need to use it again So yeah, I just found that part of code from above. So I will just, uh, so this functionality will be just for the owner of the listing, the person who listed it, uh, it will have an, will make it so the person who listed the listing would be able to have this anchor link here to be able to close the bidding, which is the method that we'll create later, this close bidding method, and it will take for in the ASP route ID, the model that ID, just naming it close bidding. And we actually want to make it so this person can only close the bidding once the model that is sold equals to false. So if a person actually closes the bidding, the model will be is that is sold will be true. So he cannot, the idea is that he cannot close the bidding even after the mod, the bidding was already closed and that after the model was sold. So after the listing was sold, he cannot close the bidding then because yeah, it doesn't make sense. Here, I'm just gonna write another of these lines to separate the sections. And here we're going to handle the comments actually. So if the user is 
authenticated. So if a user is logged in, uh, he will be able to add a comment to the listing. So just making it just we need the container div here. And the form which will redirect us to a method that we'll also create later to add comments, naming it add comment. The method will be post. And I'm gonna have an uh, H6 header. You can add a comment. Actually, we can we'll store the comment, so the input will be a text area actually. So it's a bit bigger. And giving it a class of form control for the styling. And this area label with text with text area. And the name of this text area would be we'll put it to contents contents so that we can uh, connect it to the when we'll create later the comment as an object. And in the styling we'll put the width to forty percent. And the vertical align to top so it will be placed on top. On the upper part. Here we also need some input of type hidden to have the user that made the comment and also to have the listing which we can copy from here because we, so that we can create a comment as an object we need these two input these two properties so to say because a comment is also always associated to a user and to a listing and that's how we can add a comment just making the styling of this button to so the display of it just making it an inline block And yes, some margins to it. So in this else condition here, else close will just specify how it would look like when the user is not authenticated and when the user cannot add the comment. So I'm just copying this here. Just removing the form. And this hidden inputs we won't need actually. And just we'll make the input here to disabled so we cannot click it just the same as we did when we added the bid. The only thing left now is here just to display a way to display a list of all the comments. So this was the form above how to add a when we add the comment. Now we just need to display the comments, just a line there to separate this and I'm just having another container div just for the styling or a bit of margins by default and here I just need a header to set that says comments And we need the for each loop to loop all of the comments for that are made in a listing. So var comment in modal that comments. I 
and here in a div which yeah we can make some styling to it as well just we'll give it a border we'll make the border visible so it will be one pixel thick solid and light gray as a color we'll set the margins to 10 pixels and some padding as well 10 pixels should be enough and we'll just make the border radius we'll give it a border radius so on the edges it will be like rounded give it a width of 40 percent in this you can play around with the CSS styling actually yeah just what I was thinking how to do it and inside here in a paragraph inside paragraph tags we can input the comment that content and we can just make it so that we also see who posted the comment like the username so add comment that user that username and i guess this was it this was this should be it if we don't have any errors so now if we click on the title here it should link us to the details page and this is how it looks like so yeah we can submit something there but it won't work because we haven't made the add uh, bit or add comment method yet but this is how they would look like which looks good to me that's how they are displayed so here's the comment section and here are the main information about the listing just until now no bits are submitted If we're going to try to log out to see how uh, someone who is not logged in sees this, just go to listing index or this details one, and this is how. So, this submit button is now not clickable, and this comment button is not clickable, but the other things. The persons that are not logged, the people that are not logged in can see uh, clearly, can see okay. In this section, we will handle the CSS of our application and the structure of it. We will handle the navigation menu and the way it will be displayed. And we are also going to be adding some complementary features such as pagination and the search bar. After all these modifications, our auctions application will look much cooler visually and more user friendly. So let's just start working. So firstly, we need to go to site.css file to make some modification to the CSS of the application. So here we have some already some styling to it by default. And I'm just going to be adding some extra some padding in the body. Uh, of the padding will be of 10 pixels and I'm also going to specify here the background color which the one I'm choosing has uh, the following code now I'm just I'm also going to add some stylings to the navigation to the items with the navigation class the background color of it i'm just choosing it to be something similar to the background color but also but of course to be a bit different And I'm also going to give some uh, border to the navigation and it will be of one pixel solid 
and the color of it will be black. And now to the items that have the nav link class, I'm just making it, I'm giving them a color of black. And I'm also going to make some styling here so that when we hover over them, they will turn the text of these items will turn to white. Just something to make them visually a bit better. So color to white. Just going to run the application to see how many of the changes are saved. Okay, so we see that the background has changed the color. We see actually this these items in the navigation are not changing. Okay, so let me just go to the layout.cshtml file. And here I'm gonna we're gonna change the items that are in our navigation. So first we need to uh, remove these classes that are in this navigation class. So the color that there already was would conflict with the color that we inputted ourselves. Okay, so now we see that the color of for the navigation is changed. Okay, I'm gonna remove this button that, that, that was there. We don't need something like that. So this icon thing that is by default. Now I'm also gonna change this item in the navigation. So for the first one, I'll change the controller and the name will be active listings because this will redirect us to the listings controller and to the index method. I'm going to also remove this uh, class here that specifies the color of these navigation items because that would conflict with our own CSS for it. Okay, so we removed that icon, what was there in the beginning. Okay, so what we're going to do now is that some items in our navigation will make them to be visible only when the user is logged in. So here I'm writing at if user that identity does uh, is authenticated, then these menus that will be here will only be displayed when the user will be logged in. So let me just copy that first one. And here, I'm just gonna change the method here to make them to, uh, to redirect them to the create method. And here I'm gonna make the title to create listings. So only a user that is logged in can access this method, this menu item. I'm just copying it again. I'm putting like three menus, three navigation items here. And the second one here will redirect us to the my listings uh, method. And the third one to the my bits method, which we will make in the uh, upcoming tutorials. But basically this will redirect us to a list of the users listings and the my bits uh, method will redirect them to a list of uh, to the listings which they have bid it for. We'll specify how these methods work later, but just to have them there uh, visually. That's why we are doing them now.
In this navigation item, we will actually input a search bar, which will make it to be right in the middle of our navigation menu. And for it, actually, I'm going to need the library from the font awesome. This is a page that allows us to have some pretty cool icons inside our projects. So this was the page, but we need to go to the library and we need to copy the link tag here and input it in the header so that now we can use the cool icons that this library offers. And for it, firstly here, we're going to use it here because we're going to input a search icon and this will also, of course, the search input. We're going to need to have a form here so that whatever is inputted in the, in this search, in this search input will be redirected to the listings controller and to the index method. Specifying the method here to get, because that's how we do it in a, when we make the search functionality. When we search for items, when we filter items. Here I need an input tag. So I'm giving it some styling to it. Just making the width of it to 80%. The remaining 20% will be covered by the search button slash icon. I'm going to float this to the left. And here I'm giving it a radius to the border top left on the top left border and in the bottom left border I'm giving it a radius as well so it will be like around it the background color I'm setting it to white smoke Okay, I've misspelled it, the float there. I've actually made a specific video on how to make this exactly, this exact search bar, which I'm going to be linking down in the description. And here I'm going to specify the type that it accepts will be on the text. And the name, I'm giving it a name like search string. And the class, I leave it as form control. So down below, we're gonna need, we need a button to submit what, to be able to submit the data. And I'm giving it a styling of uh, the width, I'm setting it to 20%, the float, I'm going to float it to the left, and the border will be set to none, we won't have any borders. I'm making the background to tr transparent. And the height of the button will be 40 pixels. And of course, we need to specify here the type of the button to be submit. Here, we're going to write what will be displayed in the button. And here comes our icons from Fontasm library. I'm giving it a class of FA and FA search, which is basically just a search icon. 
we're actually going to input icons in each of these navigation items because they will look very much very much better visually so to the active listings i'm gonna give it an icon of fa fa solid and fa house you can see this on the font awesome uh, website the codes for many different icons but i've sold them before and i'm just inputting them here now to save some time so to the create listing navigation item i'm giving it a class of fa fa solid and fa plus so to, it's going to be this plus sign to the my listings I'm going to change it the class to FA newspaper here. And in the last one, in the my bits navigation item, the class will be FA, FA solid and FA sec dollar. So we're just starting the application to see how it looks until now visually. Of course, need to be logged in to see more things, but we can see this search bar here, which looks pretty cool in my opinion. And the active listings with this icon. When we hover over the navigation items, they should be white as we specified in site.css. But okay, we had to write dot nav link to specify that this is a class. And if we refresh now, we can see that if we hover over this navigation item, it will turn to white. If we can log in, we would be able to see the other navigation items. So that's how they seem. That's how they look when we hover over them. And until now, we only have active only the first two navigation items. And we have to implement the functionality for the search bar as well, which we haven't done. I'm actually going to open up a project. As I said, I will link down below how we can add the search functionality in our projects. But I will just take the code from my form project here. And I will explain you what I'm going to do, be doing. So this was my form application. Firstly, I will actually copy the code for the pagination functionality because we are going to implement them both. And for both of them, we need to modify the index method. And I'm going to link down in the description below the video where I explain pagination more in detail. Basically, we need to add a class, a paginated list class in our root uh, directory. Okay, I'm naming a class here, pagenated list.cs, and I'll input there everything from, that I copied from my forum project. This is, okay, I'm just going to change the namespace here to the name of the project, and this you could find in the Microsoft documentation as well. This exact pagenated list class, but let me just go back to the controller here and we're going to need to modify the index method as well. Let me see here in our previous project. Okay, so this is the structure. We take a number, we take a number for the paginated list. And this is how we, the view will be returned. And we need a page size there, a page size variable there. Let me just copy the first two firstly. So basically, yeah, we have a page size, how many items we want to be in a page. And then we return this paginated list class with the items from our context. In the parameter, we need a uh, page number int parameter to know in which 
uh, in which page we are. And we also need this search string parameter if in case the user inputs something in the search bar. So we'll take the items from this application DB context variable in this application DB context variable. We are setting the page size to three. And of course, we're taking the page number and the search string from the parameter. And here we actually make an if clause in case the search string is not null. So if a user has inputted something in the search string, So here in the application DB context variable, we are searching with this dot where function. We are searching for the items where the title contains this search string. Basically, that's what it does. And here we need to return a view here. And here in Below, we need to make the change it to listing there. And in application DB context here, we need to specify that we want listings that are not sold. We could do this later. So listings where dot is sold is equal to false. So in the first page will only appear those listings that aren't where the bidding is not closed. And we could do it later, but I'm doing it right now since we are handling the index method one more time. And I'm just covering what we have here and the exact same thing will be returned in case the user inputs something in the search bar. But the difference will be that uh, the listings will contain the title that was inputted in the search bar. If we've seen in our previous project, we also need this on top of a page, we need to uh, use a paginated list. And here we need these variables and this uh, HTML elements, which basically are just these buttons on, on the bottom of the page that we can go from one page to another. So from the first page to the second page and so on. And I'm just inputting them here in our index.cshtml file. And on top of it, I'm making the model. So we are importing a paginated list model. We are using a paginated list model. And if we're on the application now, we should see all of our changes. Okay, we can see here, let it just load. We can see here this uh, pagination implemented, but we only have one page. And we can see that the search bar is functional. If we type their shirt, our listing will appear, but we only have one listing, so we can do much uh, experiments with that. In this section, we will implement how to add bids and how to close the bidding in our application. We will write the methods in the controller for both of these functionalities, and we will also gonna need to create a bids service. So let me just firstly go to our details page to see where we have added the form to add the bidding. And let me just find it. So here we have this form where uh, the user can input a bid. But this add bid method, we haven't written anywhere yet. So we need to implement that in our, uh, in our listings controller. So I'm just writing it right here somewhere. So this will be an HTTP post method. So as usual, public async, it will be an asynchronous await method, public async task. 
takes it returns an action result and I'm naming it uh, we'll name it add bid and what we'll write here inside we will bind here the what we will take from our form so we'll write here the id that we'll take from the form the price of the bid the listings id and the identity user id and in the And we here need to specify also that we are, we are taking a bit object from the form. So firstly, we need to check if the model state is valid. And if that is the case, it will basically store that bit in our database but to do that we will actually we don't we will actually need to create a service to get the bids so a service like service bids that add and then we'll add the bid but now we need to actually create this service because it doesn't exist and let me just go to this services folder here and firstly add a new item to add an IPids service interface. Press enter and you will need to write the method signature. Uh, this will be an asynchronous await method. It doesn't return anything. The name is add and it takes a bit in the parameters. Now we need to go to the services folder and add the bids service. So like new class bids service. And this will implement the iBids service interface. Here we'll implement the interface there and we'll need to access the context which I'm copying it from the I list from the listing service. So just this constructor and this variable that where we store the context. I'm just gonna need to rename the constructor here. So this way we will ju we just take uh, the con the a variable with the context and this here we in the in our add method we just need to write underline context that bids that add and we will add the bid to our context and we just need here to await to write await and then to save the changes to our database with this save changes async method so this method doesn't return anything so it's good now and in our listings controller we need to have a variable here for the bids service, just like that, a private read only I bids service, and I'll give a name to the variable, just like I've done there above, uh, bids service. And we also are gonna need to write this to write this service in the constructor as well. There and here. So now we have access to the service that we created in the controller. Let me just go to the program.cs here and add the service that we just created. We'll add it as a scoped service. And here we specify the name of the interface. We always need to do this each time we create a service to go to program.cs. And now back to the add bid method in our controller. Here the name of our service actually we made it to be bids service.
and now here we are gonna need to take the listing and here now we are gonna need to have a variable where we will store the listing where the bid was made so underline listing service that get by id bid that listing id so we'll just we just need the listing where this bidding was made so now we can take the listing that price and set it to the bid that price so to the new bid that was made to that listing that's why we needed the listing variable and we need to save these changes to the database and we actually needed this to do this by this context that save changes async but since we manipulate data in the context we just need to create another method there just like a save changes method it doesn't take anything it doesn't return anything let me implement this in the i listings in the listing service i'm just making it async and here we just need to write await save underline context that save changes async So now we can use this method in the controller so that the change of the price of the listing will be changed in the database as well. So here we just write await listing service that save changes. And now we can just return view and return the user to the details page and we can input here the listing so it takes the details page will be for that listing the details method takes a listing so yeah we need the listing object there when we return the view and that was it for the add bid method. We now can also write the close bidding method. So public async task returns action result. The name of it will let it as it was close bidding and it takes an int id parameter if we go to the details page let me see where we have it here so yeah we have a an anchor tank here to be able to close the bidding which can only be done by the person who posted the listing And here we need to take the listing where the that has the ID that we take here in the parameter and we will set that listings uh, so the isol property of that listing we are going to need to set to true so that means that the listing is sold now we can just use this save changes method to save the changes to the database and we can return the users to the details page of that listing okay so let me just refresh it here
have there seems to be an error okay i was having an error because here when i declared this service in the program.cs i declared the interface twice so if i run the application now we can go now and try these functionalities that we implemented we actually is good to uh, register another user so that one makes the biddings and the other one can close them. With just a name and a password there. If we click on this listing here, let me just try to add the bid and submit it. And as you can see now, the new price for the bid, uh, for the bid, the new price that can be bidded is thirty-seven dollars now. So the add bid method worked fine, worked very well. If we log in with the other user now, we see here that the owner can see who made the bidding and how much he made. So we see it there. And if we close the bidding now. So if the owner tries to close the biddings, the winner will appear on top there. As we can see here, what we wrote on top of the details page, the name of the winner will appear on the owner's page, but if the user has won the bidding, it will appear the line of congratulations, you are the winner. So this should appear on the other accounts page. So on Sean's account, he if he opens the bidding, if he opens the listing, he should see only that he should see that he is the winner. So if we try to log in with the Sean account, okay, we won't see anything here because we changed the index page so that it shows only the active listing so the listing is not active anymore because now it is sold so let me just comment this out here that shows in our index page only active listings i uncommented the wrong line there we should uncomment the line where the user hasn't inputted something in the search bar. So this here. And actually, when we'll implement later on the my listings and my bits methods, the user will be able to see his own bits and his own listings in a separate tab. So we don't have to change it here. So this procedure that we're doing here won't be necessary then. Okay. The, so now if the user opens it, he sees that he won, you are the winner. So Sean won the bidding. In this section, we will handle the functionality of adding comments to the listings. We will firstly create the add comment method in our controller, and we will create the comment service in order to interact with the database. So let me just firstly go to our project and i'm going to open up the details page uh, here i'm going to i'm trying just to find the form where we add the comments so here's our form where the users can input the comments and we have to create this add comment method in our controller so if we go to the listings controller just somewhere here I'm going to write here the method as an HTTP POST method. And here the usual public async task. It returns an action result. And the name of it is add comment, of course. Here, then. And we are going to bind what we take from the form to this method. 
So I'm going to write inside here the ID that we take for, from the form, the content of the comment, the listing ID, and the identity user ID. And here we specify that we're taking a comment object from the form. Here we then make the check if the modal state is valid. And if that's correct, we will need to store the comment in the database. For that, we need to await to write the await keyword. And here we need a method to be able to add the comment to our database. But for this reason, we're going to need to create a comment service because we haven't created any yet. So here in the services folder, firstly, I'm going to need to add an interface, which I'm going to name iComments service. Here, we're going to have to specify the signature method or our add method. So task add, and it takes a comment in the parameter. It doesn't return anything. Now to the services folder, we add a class, which we are going to name comments service. Here on top, we first need to implement our interface that we just wrote. And here on the errors, we, need, we can click on implement interface. But on top of the page, let me just go to the listing service and copy just what we do usually here. We need to uh, get this variable and the constructor in order to get access to the context. And I'm just going to modify here the name of the constructor to have the name of our service. And in the add method, I'm writing their async keyword. And here we can just write underline context dot comments dot add the comment. And then we just need to save these changes to the database. And this method doesn't have the need to return anything. Let me just go back to the controller now. And we need to write here a variable that takes this service. So I comment service, and I'm naming it underline comments service. We need to store the service to declare it also here in the constructor, just like we've done with the previous services that we've created. So in program.cs, as usual, we need to declare the service, We're making it as add as scoped service. And inside here, we write the name of the interface and the name of the service. Now we just need to go back to the controller and continue with our add comments method. So here we've added the comment. And we here need a variable to store the listing from where we are taking the comment. So await a listing service that get by ID. And this takes the comment that listing ID. So we're taking from the database the listing where the comment was made. This is comments that listing ID. Comment that listing ID. And now we can return the view with this ex of the, we can return the view of the details page for this exact listing.
So what's left for us to do is we can run the application and check this functionality. If we click on this listing, we can try and edit the comment and add the comment here. Like, did I win? I don't know. We could ask about the listing actually. And here we see the comment and the user who posted the comment. And actually try here with the owner's account of that listing, which was Jeff. And I can return a comment to the user who asked and see how it appears. So yes, you did submit. And we see that Jeff uh, replied to that comment. In this section, we will see how we can display the specific listings that the user has made. We will only need to create a method in our controller and this can be accessed by the user from the navigation menu. So let me just open up our controller and we can make this method just below the index method because they have a similar structure and I'm copying this firstly and pasting it just right below that. I will change the name to my listings and I'm actually not going to make the search functionality. I'm not going to need the search functionality for this method. So I'm going to delete this part and these lines here as well, but we're going to have, we're going to use the pagination. Here, uh, the only difference that's going to be is that when we return the view, we will return the index view. And also, let me just uncomment this part here because we, in the index method, we need to show only the method, only the listings that are not sold. And in our listings method, we will show every listing that the user, that the user has made, including the sold ones. So here we can write this dot where method where we will specify that we want to display only the listings where the user ID where or where the user is equal to the currently logged in user. So L dot identity user ID equals user dot find first value and inside the brackets we write claim types dot name identifier. With this line here only what it does is just takes the ID of the currently logged in user. This is how we get the ID of the currently logged in user in the controller. And this is all we're going to need for this method. Now, if we run the application and we click on the my listings from, okay, firstly, when we run the application, we won't see this listing anymore because it is sold. The listing is sold as we did in the previous video when we closed the bidding. Okay, I'm just running it one more time. So we won't be able to see any listings in the first page, but when we go to my listings, we will see all of the listings that this user has made before. In this section, we will see how we can display the specific listings that the user has bid it for. We will need to create a method in the controller as well as a service to get the bids from the database. Then we will create a new view page, which the user can access from the navigation menu. So let me just go back to the project. And here uh, under my listings method, I'm going to copy them and I'm going to write here my bits method. This, they have a similar structure, but also they are 
different, which we will see here. So the first thing that I'm going to do here, we will get the data from the bid service and not from the listing service because we'll get a list of bids and we haven't created this method yet. So if I go here to the iBid service interface, I'm going to need to create this get all method, which will return an iQueryable of bits and it will have the name of get all. And if I go to the then to the bits service, let me just implement that method here, that the interface. And let me just remove it here. And inside this variable, I'm going to get the data from the context. So we'll use this link query to get the data from the context. So from a in underline contact context dot bits, we will include in the context a few things. So firstly, for the bits, we will need to include the listing. because we will then show the listings. And if we write then include, we can take the users of that listing. And there we select it, select A, and we will just need to return this variable. And that's just how we that's just all for the get all method. And here, as we have written it here, we have taken the data here in the method from the service. The difference here is that when we will return a paginated list of bits, and we'll take the bits that a user has created. And here in the, when we return the view, we will return the view for the my bits, which we will create now the view page for my bits. So we are just adding a view here, just an empty view, which I'm going to have to name the same as the name of the method. So my bits. And for this, I'm actually going to copy the index page, but I'm going to make a few modifications to it. So I'm just going to copy the whole index page and I'm pasting it here. We have here a list of bits. And here in the forage loop, I'm changing it to bit will take the bits and we'll get the same information that we get in the index page but we will access them by writing here at bit.listing.imagepath for example and for all of the others so here we'll take the listing id by writing at bit.listing.id and this way we'll take the title of the listing that the user has bid it for so at bit.listing.title here we write at bid that listing that description. So by using the bid, we will access the listings that the user has bid it for. Here as well, we'll access the user, the listings user by the bids. I'm, I'm just changing this paragraph here to no bids made or just no bits. We'll leave the HTML for the pagination as it is. And if I run the application now, okay. If we, I go to my bits, as I remember it correct, we can see we actually bid it for this. So, and we are actually the winner. So we can see this listing by accessing the bits. 
Let me just go to the My Bits view page here. I'm just gonna change the title here to just My Bits. And this way we can see that we access our bits by in this page. So we have come to the end of the section and this was also the last functionality that we needed to add to complete our auctions application. We have come to the end of this YouTube series. We created a complete application in ASP.NET Core and learned how to build a useful auctions application. We did play around with different functionalities like adding bids, adding comments, closing the bidding, creating listings, etc. We also tried different things in the front end in order to display specific data depending on the user that was logged in, and we worked on implementing various features to the same project or to the same page. In case you have a base knowledge and know how things pretty much work in any language or framework, it is important to try and build projects with a degree of complexity. You will learn a lot just by putting all that you know together and by solving new things that come up during the way. That's why I would recommend you to try and add new features to this auctions application or change the way things are displayed in certain places. Then you would actually realize how much you really know and how much you understand how the entire application works. I want to thank you very much for watching and I would really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel and like the video in case you enjoyed the whole series. Thank you and I will see you in the next one.